Oak Sound's Spiff is a transient controller. Let's check out how Spiff works and sounds. Spiff does transient shaping. In short, Spiff is able to boost or cut the transients of a sound and does it in a very tailored way on a specific area you need and does that by using this EQ type graph. Best way to show it how it works is on music. This loop is a 90s inspired house loop and has an electronic kick, an electronic hi-hat, this Reese type synth and a second synth melody. Since there are quite a few videos out there already on Spiff, I asked Oak Sound if they wanted me to focus on anything specific in this video. And they replied with, Spiff on heavy synths would be nice. So thank Oak Sound if you hate the music. Let's assume you don't know this plugin. We'll do an overview of the controls to see how it works. Here's the kick in solo because this will show the most clear how Spiff works. And here are the controls. The plugin works with either cut or boost. You select that here. I will select boost for this kick drum. After you have decided if you want that cut or boost, it's best to continue by activating the delta knob. Delta is the solo of the transients. You have five frequency bands. These here set how Spith will react to the transients of the frequencies. The middle three can be set to shelf, peak or tilt frequency bands. And the top and bottom are high and low cut with various amounts of cut. So a large EQ dip like this means this part of the sound does not get boosted or cut. It does not make an EQ dip. The band listen does the same as the delta solo knob. Only is per band so you can fine tune how Spiff reacts. On the left side you'll find a few important dials and knobs. The biggest one is depth, and with that one you set how much transient boosting or cutting is actually done. Sensitivity can be seen as a threshold. It detects the transients. From only the loud ones when you set it closer to zero to more transients when you crank the dial. With the kick you can hear the fluttering noise this kick has increasing because it's softer in volume. Sharpness determines how wide in frequencies the boost or cut is. Very low settings give a wider uniform boost or cut. And increasing the sharpness will introduce more smaller boosts or cuts as you can see. Decay works as it does in an ADSR filter. It determines how long the boost will stay and when it returns back to normal before applying the next boost. The decay low frequency high frequency sets the balance between the low and high frequency decay. A low setting means the lower frequency decays slower and the high ones quicker, which sounds more natural. And high settings do the opposite. There are more settings. The plugin can operate in left, right or mid side. And you can set the balance between the channels. Stereo linking can be set so it can work as true stereo or dual mono and everything in between. The advanced setting lets you set if the plugin needs to work more precise for, for instance, mastering and complex material. The default setting is usually fine. It's good to have the option though. Now I have added a large boost and it nicely adds a good attack on this kick. If I would add an EQ boost, it would sound like this. The EQ also boosts the things I don't want, and Spiff brings out just the attack nicely. Let's move on to the heavy synths. Without Spiff, it sounds like this. As you can see, I already tweaked the settings and I would like to let you hear what musical impact boosting or cutting the transients will have. In solo, it sounds like this. First boost. And this is cut. The transients for the three notes at the end of every phrase are mostly affected by these settings. 
Let's play the loop in total and once again I'll do the boost first. You hear that it brings the heavy synth forward and it demands the attention when you listen. Let's set Spith to cut and listen what it does musically. Now, since it cuts the attack of the last three notes in the phrase, it gets pushed through the background. And the other synth now comes more to the foreground and becomes the center of attention. Let's add a big transient boost on the arpeggio synth. The arpeggio is continuous 16th notes. It brings out all sorts of artifacts and sounds, which add texture. I actually like this. I leave it on. On the hi-hat was an instance of spiff for the entire duration of this video. I'll mute it now. You can hear it softened the transients and the hi-hat blended more in the overall mix. If I do boost instead of cut, it gets really aggressive. Now I want to show you one thing Spiff can do very well. And that is saving over compressed audio. Let's do that with this piece of audio. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hard consonants like T's and K's etc. really jump out. If I add Spiff and reduce the transient, it can sound a bit more natural. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. 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 Spith is a great tool to shape the transients of your audio. It's not boring, it can add life to your tracks and even save bad audio. And fixing bad audio can always be a lot of work. The video displayed on screen will give great tips and techniques on how to fix that. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!